Parents and students are demanding partial refunds on tuition and other campus fees, saying online classes are poor substitutes for classroom learning. For more, I'm joined by Danny Savalos. He's co-founder of the law firm Savalos & Wong, and he's a legal analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. Danny, it's great to have you, and do you think these parents have a, have a case? Well, these cases are going to force us as a society to figure out what exactly are we paying for when we pay these thousands of dollars every year for tuition? Are we paying for the information? If that's the case, then delivery through online shouldn't make that much more of a difference uh, than being in person. But if you're paying for some intangible experience and just being on campus with other smart professors and students, then you could argue that the online format is a poor substitute. What makes it even more complicated is the fact that we already have online programs and online universities. And for those universities that are already offering online and offering on-campus classes, how in the world do we value this now forced online program? And is it worth the same thing that colleges have been charging students in the past, frankly, for time immemorial since universities began? Right. It's interesting to look at the list of schools facing lawsuits. It's everybody from Drexel to Berkeley, Vanderbilt, Purdue, Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Michigan State, UC Boulder. Uh, some of the schools who have agreed to refund unused room and board include Harvard, Columbia, Middlebury, and Swarthmore, all of which have relatively well financial position, relatively strong financial positions. So what happens to these other colleges if they have to go ahead and be forced to refund these fees and costs? Full disclosure, I'm actually an adjunct professor at Drexel. I've taught online and live, which has forced me to think a lot about you know, the value of uh, online versus live. But you're absolutely right. I mean, for schools like Harvard, who have massive endowments, I mean, their endowment is bigger than uh, most countries uh, in the world. They have a lot of money, and that's the argument. Maybe a school like Harvard or a well-endowed school could have been uh, uh, subsidizing some of these tuitions and other losses. Now they're facing a lot of lawsuits for reimbursement for tuition. Class actions, which, when aggregated, can result in huge hits to these schools, whether they're private or state universities. Yeah, so I guess the question now for all the parents out there watching is, number one, do they kind of clamor to get some of their money back? And number two, do they try to negotiate for what's going to happen this fall? It all comes down to the contract, if there is even a contract with applicable terms between the student, the parents, and the university. And those contracts will spell out what they have paid for and what the universities are allowed to do in case of what's called force majeure or some unforeseen circumstances, some impossibility of performing the contract. For those universities that put in tough clauses that benefit them, then they may be able to avoid these lawsuits. For others who have no language whatsoever, they've left themselves more exposed to these plaintiffs, and they may end up paying more than universities who developed contracts with very favorable terms for themselves. Interesting.